welcome to another edition of Forgiveness, A Journey to Freedom. And I'm here with uh, Jason Dennett. We've been tackling this fundamental topic of Christianity, forgiveness versus salvation. And I want to uh, let you know that we do have this book that we're working on. Um, it's almost ready, probably in a few weeks. There's 13 chapters, and we really delve into this topic of forgiveness and the freedom that God has available for every one of us, uh, the life that he has planned for us that begins with embracing his forgiveness, embracing the sacrifice that he's provided for us on the cross. I remember I, I was very religious. I was raised very religious. And I remember uh, for 24 years being a member of, of, of churches, different churches, and never hearing the clear presentation of the gospel. And um, I remember when God started revealing this to me, how I was being challenged that he is God and I'm not, and that he could do what he wants to do. And I remember him revealing to me, Dan, was did I need your permission to create the world? And I said, you know, obviously, no, Lord, you don't need my permission to create the world. And he said, well, then do I need your permission to forgive the world if I would so choose to forgive the world? If I, if I, and I said, no, of course not, Lord. He goes, well, that's what I've done. I came into the world to forgive the world, to make a way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life that no man comes to the Father except they come through me. So God made a way for us to be forgiven and for us to be restored back to him through the Holy Spirit. And, that, mm. and that's what we're talking about uh, in these episodes of Forgiveness, A Journey to Freedom, because this truth is fundamental to Christianity. It's the starting point, is embracing what Jesus has done on the cross so that we can then begin this transformation, this new life with God, walking in the Spirit with God. Mm. You know, Dan, I, I agree. I, that really resonates with me as you tell that story, because my story is very similar. I was raised uh, as an altar boy in a particular church, a particular denomination, and I never heard these things about Jesus. I never heard these things about the gospel and so forth. But then when I was exposed to some of the scriptures that talk about not just that Jesus died on the cross, but that he forgave the sins of the world. That really started to uh, it really started to blow my mind. You know, for example, in Second Corinthians five nineteen, and uh, this is a verse that most of us are familiar with as Christians. We like to quote Second Corinthians five seventeen, which is that verse about a new creation. Uh, Paul says it like this: Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, I find it really interesting that, you know, that that word for new, it means brand new. It doesn't just mean uh, something kind of old and you clean it off and it looks new. It's something of, a, of an, a totally new category, which when I discovered that, I mean, it really started to help me. But verse 19 is really one of these great verses that you've mentioned so many times about global forgiveness. Paul says, that is that God was in Christ, so the Father was through Jesus reconciling the world to himself, not imputing or not counting any longer their trespasses towards them. And I'll, I'll tell you, Dan, when, when verses like that, when they came across my radar, uh, that really for me was like a, a rock that began an avalanche in my life. And, and some of these verses, after having read the Bible for some time and tried to study it, I thought, when did this verse ever come into the Bible? Well, well, when, when, who added this verse to my Bible? Because I knew that Jesus died for sin, and of course, God loves everybody. But I was really unaware, even as a even as a Bible teacher, about verses that that so clearly state that Jesus not only died for sin, but for the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. And not only did He die for the sins of the world, because He did that, and His payment was effective, God no longer counts the world's sins against them. Absolutely, Jason. If you remember, and if you're familiar with the, with the account, and I'm sure you're familiar, but for our viewers, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, mm -hmm. he prayed several prayers. And one of them was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That was a, a prayer 
for Jesus, asking God the Father to forgive mm. not only those people that that were were responsible for physically nailing Jesus to a cross and torturing him, but I believe for the sin of the entire world, for all of us that were guilty before God. Because right before Jesus died, after he prayed, he interceded, he was in essence saying, God, look at me as I'm dying, as I'm paying for their sins. So now would you forgive them, Father? Father, forgive them for their sins, for they know now what they're doing. They had no idea what they were doing. But God answered their prayer. Right before Jesus died, his last breath, he said, tell tell us thy or, or it is finished. And he gave up his ghost. In other words, he finished. He, he finished the plan of redemption, the work that needed to be done for humanity to be reconciled with God, to have their sins dealt with, this problem solved. The resolution of sin for humanity was complete. And as Jason, uh, I, I was under this, the same kind of experience. I've never heard this at church. And, and as a matter of fact, many people even today would say, no, you're not forgiven. Only the elect are forgiven. Only those that are going to be saved or predestinated are forgiven. Or only if you, you know, keep, um, you know, only if you ask for forgiveness are mm -hmm. you forgiven. But there is only one sin that you do need to ask for forgiveness, and that is the sin of unbelief, which is, you know, basically at the heart of a life apart from God, rejecting God. It's really the, the sin of, of unbelief and un, unbelief in his word and who God is, his very person. So that sin of unbelief is a, is a pretty big, uh, it uh, has a, a lot to it, a lot involved in it. So the, so the verse that you just referenced, that was in John chapter 19, wasn't it? Correct, yes. So in John chapter 19, I, I think it was verse 30. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. So you're saying that right there when he said it is finished, you're saying that he was saying that global forgiveness payment for the sins of the world was finished, was accomplished, was fully paid once and for all. I don't have to do anything anymore. I don't have to make sacrifices or penance. It was paid in full. You could use that, it, that term in the uh, Greek language has to do with the completion like of an artist. Uh, uh, if, if an artist completed a painting, let's say it's a masterpiece, when the artist said it is finished, it is finished. So let's just think about the, the Mona Lisa. Mm -hmm. uh, when the, the artist completed the Mona Lisa, he says it's finished. It's now sitting in a museum somewhere, maybe in Europe. Can you imagine someone going to that, that masterpiece, that work of art, and saying, you know, I don't think it's really finished. I, I think the Mona Lisa needs some shading around the eyes, you know, or, you know, need to change the color of her eyes or put some highlights in her hair. That would be ridiculous to do something like that. That's a masterpiece. You don't touch it. So when Jesus said it is finished, he fully completed the work of salvation. It is finished. It is done. It can also be used, that phrase, to tell us die, or it is finished, when you paid off a debt. So let's say you had a mortgage. Let's say you had to go to a bank and you had a $300,000 mortgage on your home. You have term 30 years. You have 30 years worth of payments. And let's say you get in trouble and uh, maybe you paid it for two years, you lose your job, and you can't keep paying or even if you could pay. But let's just say you were to come to me and say, hey, Dan, you know, can you pray for me? I, I, I have a problem. I can't pay my mortgage, lost my job. And out of the goodness of my heart, I say, you know what? I'm going to pay that mortgage without telling him. And I go to the bank and I pay the mortgage off. Let's say you had $280,000 left. I pay it, the whole thing off. So that debt that you have is now discharged. It is complete. It is finished. You don't have any more payments. Imagine if you go to the bank and you try to make a payment and the teller tells you, oh no, it is finished. The, the mortgage has been discharged. You'd be shocked. Say, what do you mean it's finished? Yeah, someone paid it. Who? And, and you know, the bank says, well, they didn't want to be known, so we're not going to tell you, but just trust me. Your, all those future payments, 30 years of payments are all done, canceled. You have no more payments. It's, it's, it's completely wiped clean. So you're still, you know, uh, having this house with, with no mortgage. That's what Jesus did. 
all your sins, all your future sins, all your past sins, every sin you'll ever commit. Once you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you have embraced him as a sacrifice for your sin, his Holy Spirit enters into you and the last sin that he'll that that he was recognizing in your life is now discharged. So God no longer holds anyone's sins against people other than the sin of unbelief until that one sin is reconciled with God. After that, it is finished. It is completely done. So Jesus is there on the cross, you're saying, and he cries out to telestai, and it means paid in full or completely finished, like the masterpiece of redemption is finished? Absolutely. Like a, a debt is completely paid off and discharged, paid in full? Paid in full. Well, if that's really the case, then it seems that John loves that language of, of total forgiveness. Because the same man, John the Apostle, he's the one that gave us that great verse, John 3, 16, which we all know so well, right? Where And he talks about the world. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And for you, the world. That's right. And you quoted him earlier as he, he, John was quoting John the Baptist. And he said, behold, the Lamb of God, John 1, 29, who takes away the sin of the world. And now you're saying that John uses another expression. He says it is finished. The, the sin debt of the world is totally paid. That's incredible. It's absolutely good news. That's why the gospel is called good news, that God loves you. He loves me. He loves us. He wants everyone to be saved. God desires that all men come to the knowledge of the truth. And the truth is that there's one mediator, and that's Jesus, between God and man. And Jesus paid the sin debt of the world. He discharged the sin, making the way open for anyone now to embrace him and then be born again and receive the life of God. And this is called the restoration of God, the restoration of the Holy Spirit, the new birth, which takes place when he enters into our heart, when mm. the Spirit of Christ enters into our heart. But unless, unless all the sin was paid for, unless the, the sin debt of the world was cleared, unless our sin and our, our viewers, unless all that sin was paid for, he could never enter in, right? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. So that was the barrier between uh, God and man is our sin, our yeah. disobedience, our unbelief. It reminds me of this verse here in John. As we're talking about forgiveness is not the same as salvation. And as we're focusing in on the fact that the world is forgiven, John says in his first epistle, 1 John 2, 2, he says, and he himself, speaking of Jesus, he himself is the propitiation, a really fascinating word that I'm sure you could tell us about. He himself is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Amen. That's and incredible. Yeah, that, that is a complete change of relationship between God and man, and humanity because of what Jesus has done for us. And uh, this is going to be a long topic, but we mm -hmm. wanted to break it down in small sections so that they're bite-sized. And it gives you enough time. We quote verses for you to get your Bible and look up these verses. And this is essential, really. There, there are so many people today that do not understand the difference between forgiveness and salvation. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that those are Two, two sides of the same issue, but they're very different. And it's important to understand them so that you could be free, so that you could understand that the, that the sin issue has been resolved. It's been solved by God himself so that if we will accept his solution, if we will believe what he's done for us, if we will believe his word and receive his life, then we would experience the fullness of life. As, as you said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. And this is the life that God wanted and, and desires for all of us to have. And so uh, we're going to continue in our, in our uh, study of the difference between forgiveness and salvation. We'll probably be about 90 programs by the time we're done, because we're going to do a, a, a deep dive into that word propitiation. We'll also look at the word atonement. We'll look at words like confession, what the Bible talks about these words, and we'll also deal with a lot of issues. I know that as you, uh, as was for me, when I first heard this topic, mm -hmm. it, it just, I, I never heard this at church. I never, um, you know, heard this taught 
And when and as God started revealing these things to me and and other many Bible teachers, they uh, they believe in the grace of God. Uh, it was a little bit difficult because it, it challenged my theology. It, it challenged my views about salvation, about God, about Jesus, about His His cross, and what took place there. Yeah, yeah. I had the same experience uh, when I heard this. I thought, well, if this is really true, this has remarkable repercussions because that would make the cross bigger than I had ever heard about it. Even in Christian uh, Protestant churches, the forgiveness of Jesus, the love of God, if this was true, this global forgiveness would be bigger than I had ever heard it. So I think that's a great place to uh, leave off for this time, and uh, we can pick up next time. Yeah, love to. Thanks again for joining us. We, uh, We really enjoy these talks. Look forward to meeting soon. Be blessed.